The 1994 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournaments are brought to you in part by TCF Bank, banking the way you want it. The American Dairy Association, on behalf of your local dairy farmers. Menards, helping families build America's heartland for 32 years. U.S. West, connections you can depend on. By the Minnesota Beef Council. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. And by Great Clips for Hair, our stylists, your style. A tradition of competition. A season of hard work practice and teamwork it all comes down to this these are the tournaments on nine now minnesota nines jim gettleman Darkness has fallen. It is the last night in March. The time to contest the oldest of all Minnesota's wonderful prep championships. This is the boys' class AA title game. Coming your way from the St. Paul Civic Center. Welcome inside this rapidly filling edifice for what should be a terrific game between two teams who've been ranked, well, in the top three virtually all season long. Minneapolis, Washburn, and Hopkins. If you had to pick a favorite in either bracket before the uh, tournament started, you'd have to go on with the Millers in the top bracket and Hopkins in the lower bracket. I'm Jim Gilliland. Joining me tonight, as have they have throughout the basketball tournament, Janet Carvin and Dick Bramer. And Dick, we're going to start with the Millers who come from that top bracket. They talked about expectations yesterday and how they, everyone is expecting them to get here, but they didn't really... They didn't really do anything except take it one at a time, and they've gotten to the point where they want to be. They've got uh, tremendous athletic uh, ability all the way through their lineup. Interesting matchup, I think, tonight will be Eric Minia at 6'11". He's got a few inches on his uh, counterpart for uh, Hopkins, Justin White. But Justin White's got a little bit more girth to him. And I think one of the keys for uh, their team tonight, Washburn, will be Eric Minia and how he fares and whether either one of those players gets into foul trouble. I think that'll be the interesting matchup in tonight's double A championship. Looking at Hopkins, they were another team, Janet, that had terrific expectations. Uh, they were unbeaten last year coming into the tournament, got bumped out in the first round, came back more determined than ever with a veteran group, and hey, they're here again and getting the pieces solved one by one. They are really excited and listening to coaches talk, they both are in the position that they want to be. Kenny Novak Jr. hoping that he will get the efforts from all of his team. Justin White was held only to nine points last night for opening game. He had 32, so he is the key player. I think another issue to look at is can Hopkins handle the pressure of Washburn? Today we saw a Morris area team with a big guy uh, trying to, to battle the uh, the pressure also, and they had a lot of trouble. So I think if Hopkins guards can handle it, it should be a very, very close and interesting game. As you mentioned today, we Class A championship has already been decided. St. Agnes won that ball game by a score of 78 to 71. It was a terrific contest. We can only hope for something half as entertaining and we're going to have a full night here at the St. Paul Civic Center. We just completed the third place game in Class AA as well. That was also a terrific finish. Moundsview had all five starters in double figures and won it 80 to 76 over Moorhead. Lots of color and excitement on championship night and to bring you some of it, let's go to our compatriot, Jeff Grayson. Jeff? All right, Gilly, thank you very much and welcome everybody to championship Saturday night. It should be a great one. Like our announcers were saying, these are two teams that really were expected to be here, so it should be a great showdown. Moundsview took the third place game in Class AA. Earlier today, it was Bethlehem Academy. They won the third place game in Class A. We're going to have lots of interviews, features, being a colorful side of this contest. Helping us do that, while they're not saying boo, they're saying Scoogman, Andy Scoogman, marvelous. All right, Jeffrey, well, I'll tell you, it's kind of sad. We've had four great days here at the St. Paul Civic Center, and we only have about two hours left, but as they say, you should save the best for last, and that's exactly what we're doing tonight. we got two great schools, two great teams, both with uh, excellent fan support. They're all here tonight. I'll be here 
all night long as well, providing the color and excitement that makes uh, this tournament the great one that it is. For now, though, let's head on back to Jeff Grayson. JG? All right, Andy, thank you very much. That's what they're after. They're going for the gold. The Class AA Championship pregame programming continues here on the Tournaments on 9 when we come back. It's the St. Paul Trine Circus, April 7th through the 10th at the Civic Center. Tickets just $7, 11 and $13 at Ticketmaster. General admission tickets just $5 at Super America. Discount coupons at Perkins Restaurants, Snyder Drug, and Target Treat Seats. Call 1-800-8-CIRCUS or The Connection. BMW and Mercedes may say their cars walk on water, yet perhaps their owners would disagree. Nearly two out of three when replacing their cars chose something else. Lexus, however, has the highest repurchase rate of any luxury car line. So before you buy one of them, check with someone who's already gotten their feet wet. Whether you buy or lease, see the LS at Lexus of Wyzetta. If it's true the source of America's treasure is its land, the source of its character, its lifeblood, is the people who work it. For through all the change agriculture has seen, the pride, the values, and the work ethic of the farmer have remained true. At Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to serve our nation's farm families and are dedicated to preserving their way of life, not just for today, but for the generations to come. My fields are more than just land. They're where I make my living. And no two are quite the same. So I work hard to do what's right for each one because you get out of them what you put into them. Every time I rediscover my farm through my grandson's eyes, I see how good my decisions have really been. Jim Norman has gone through a lot of changes, but he keeps going back to car X. Hey, when you find something good, stick with it. For brake repairs... I'd go back. We go back to Carex. Don't worry, call the Carex man. Takes a lot of people to put on the 1994 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. That's a look at just one of the people. Welcome back to the St. Paul Civic Center, everybody. I'm Andy Skugman, and you know, Hopkins has been here only to the state tournament only three times in the last 20 years. And the Novaks have been a big part of that. They've been a part of it. Uh, they're part of it this year. Kenny Novak Jr. is the head coach. Kenny Novak Sr. here is the assistant coach. Back in 1974, things were different. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, what do you mean different? Uh, yeah, little problem with the uh, little problem here with the band. You were coaching back then. Your son was playing back in 1974. Right. Tell us about that. Well, we were the number one rated team in the state. And uh, with the Minneapolis Star and Tribune, and uh, we got up beat in a double overtime. And then we came back to win the consolation title, and uh, that was about it. And now you're in the championship game. Your assistant coach, your son is the head coach. What's it like? Uh, it, it's tremendous. It's it's absolutely super. As you know, Andy, I. I I haven't spent five minutes with the varsity at all. Uh, Ken, uh, I have my B squad, sophomore squad. That's what I have. So I'm kind of uh, along for the ride. I'm there, but um, I don't take part in the, uh, very little. But um, I'm there if he needs me. We I, I know, though, that you've taken a look at Minneapolis Washburn. Uh, what do you think of this matchup tonight? Um, uh, I got to be honest and say it's going to be very tough for us to cover all of their big men. And they have everybody back. We beat them last year. They got everybody back. We only have two starters back. But uh, I'll tell you something. We're not running scared. We're not going in there like we're going to lose this thing. We're going to we're going to go we're going to go to win it. We're we're not playing to for second place. And that's why you're here, no doubt. Uh, Justin White got in a little bit of fall trouble last night. Is that the key? Uh, the, definitely. I mean, we had a lead when he got in fall trouble, so it helped. But. Uh, you know, their size is so unbelievable. We just can't afford to lose anyone. There's no question about that. 
Now, I see that you have the same sport coat on tonight, and your son has the same uh, suit on. Is there any superstition going on here? Well, you know, coaches, you know, I guess are a little uh, superstitious, but we need everything going for us. We're not going to change anything, just like in the ball game. We're not going to change too much. Not completely, but we're not right. going to change too much what we have been doing and what got us here. This ball club is, what, 20 six and two i believe or i can't even remember anymore and last year we were 27 and one so i like to think that uh, hopkins is doing something right well kenny you know it's great to have you back here and uh, we wish you luck tonight thank you very much all right that is kenny novak senior assistant coach of the hopkins royals we're going to take a look now at the school the hopkins high school we're going to take a little bit of a uh, look at that uh, sponsored by us west and now a us west high school profile Hopkins High School has a 90-year tradition of excellence. The more than 1,500 students attending District 270 Single High School come from parts of seven Minneapolis suburbs. Students select their programs from a comprehensive curriculum. English, social studies, science, and math are required. Elective courses include four levels of French, German, and Spanish, as well as three years of Russian, Chinese, and Japanese on interactive cable. Courses such as child psychology and auto mechanics are available in personal and family life sciences and industrial technology. Hopkins High School's business education department provides hands-on learning with the latest equipment and practical experience out in the business community. Students also are able to design their own courses through the independent study program. Fine arts opportunities abound. Hopkins boasts more than a dozen performing music groups, and the display gallery in the art department features local, state, and national award-winning work of students. The yearbook, newspaper, and dramatic productions also spotlight student achievement and creativity. KHOP-TV, the student-run television station, broadcast school sports and special productions. The surrounding community provides opportunity for students to become business interns. Students also perform service for residents through the Community Involvement Program, which is recognized as a national model. Hopkins has active intramural and co-curricular programs. The Hopkins Royals compete in 25 late conference sports. Hopkins High School was the first Minnesota high school selected as a school of excellence by the United States Department of Education. The 90-year tradition of excellence continues. This high school profile is brought to you by U.S. West, connections you can depend on. And we thank U.S. West and the Minnesota State High School League for that message. I'm Jeff Grayson at the St. Paul Civic Center. Welcome back to pregame programming. I'm with Leah Frazier, a Washburn graduate and former basketball player at Washburn. Welcome. This must be a fun night for you to see your team play. Oh, I'm so excited for these guys. I'm so proud of them. It's, I guess my timing to move back home to Minnesota was right on time. <laughs> so, you graduated in 83? Yeah. And your team's had some six, you went to the tournament, right? Right. We were, we were in the 81, 82, and 83 state tournaments, and I believe the year after I left, they were in the tournament as well in 84. How did you do it? What do you remember about the experiences? Well, I remember getting beat in the first game each year, but um, just wonderful experiences. Um, each year working towards our goal of making it to the state tournament, you know, making sure that during the season we just really tried to work on our game and perfect, you know, every aspect of it to get here. So, and, I know it helped me when, once I got to college and the rigors and uh, every day having to play at 100% once you got to college. So. And you're very comfortable in front of the microphone too. Tell us what you, you've gone into. Well, <laughs> sneak. I um, majored in speech and broadcasting and been working in television sports. Um, Chattanooga, where I lived for several years before moving back home, and of course CBS affiliate and ABC affiliate down there. So, you know, as sports junkies, we don't uh, we don't get we can't get too much of this. That's right. You're absolutely right, Leah. How do you see this game? We'll put some of your expertise to work. How do you see this game tonight? Well, of course, I'm going to want Washburn to win, but I'm here to cover the game and kind of be a little um, impartial, so to say. I'm writing for Insight um, Sports, the lo our little local paper. And But I don't know. These guys are really ready. They've got their game faces on. 
they're they're ready to come out and just basically demolish <laughs> Hopkins. So, and of course, I'm going to be rooting for him yeah, on the inside. I, I talked to Coach Lewis Boone before the game, and he was wearing a really nice tie, really fancy. And he, I asked him about the tie, and he said that was the tie that he wore when they had the team picture taken at the beginning of the year. So he's going to finish the year with that tie. A little bit of superstition. Do you ever have any superstitions when you played or when you go to games? Um, I just kind of tried to make sure that my routine was the same each time. And I know a lot of players do that, you know, from, you know, AAU on to professionals. They kind of try to make sure that they put the right sock on, then the left sock on, and tie the right shoe in, then the left shoe in, you know, those kind of things. And I, that was pretty much the type, only type of superstitions that I had. All right. Well, have fun tonight watching your alma mater. That's Leah Frazier, a graduate of Washburn. Now over to Janet Carvinen. Part of the fun of the state tournament is learning the history and some of the behind-the-scenes things that have happened over the years. 1969 was 25 years ago, and this man, Al Wold, and the Rochester John Marshall team won the state championship. Coach, it's nice to have you back. Thank you. It's fun to be back here. Does it seem like it's been 25 years ago? No, it really doesn't. I had a couple of people came up, come up to me during the tournament, and we started talking about those years and, uh, and when you start thinking about it, it 25 years ago it just doesn't seem possible what can you remember about that uh, John Marshall team from that year 1969 it was a great team they were they were very talented boys both academically and physically as basketball players uh, very rangy team nobody who had exceptional size but we had uh, about three kids that were six five to six six and a couple of kids that were six four and then the point guard, who was my son, was six, six, one and a half, and so on. Long arms, well, well uh, conditioned and uh, poised team, and it was a fun. It was a really a fun experience for them to be here. Well, I know. How many years in all did you did you coach? I coached for 37 years, Janet. Of all of those years, what else would you say would be would have been the highlights for you? I'm sure the state championship ranks right up there, but any other memories that you have that really stand out? Well, when you. When you think about all the uh, great kids you had, we had some great teams, and there were uh, there were several teams that were probably just as talented and just as just as good. But for some reason or other, we just didn't make it back to the tournament. We had some teams that came up here, and uh, we got a second and a consolation and some other honors and a third. Uh, but it takes a lot of luck to to win the championship. You had to play well those three games you're here. I know you've had a good relationship with Kerwin Englehart over the years. Uh, must be special having friendships like that along the way, too. Oh, he's been great. Uh, uh, we've been real close together. Our families were close when they were, their girls were, were in high school when our kids were in school. So it is fine. Any um, pick for tonight's game? This is going to be a real good, good, good ball game. Uh, I think there's two contrasting styles. I think uh, the quickness of Washburn is dangerous. But the size and strength of Hopkins is going to be a, a factor, too. So I wouldn't want to pick one right now. Thanks for being with us, Al. It's been my pleasure, Janet. This is Al Wolk from Rochester John Marshall. They were the state champions 25 years ago in 1969. Let's go back over to Jeff Grayson. Thank you very much, Janet. We gave you a chance to meet some of the people associated with Washburn and Hopkins. It should be a fantastic Class AA championship game. Like Dick, Janet, and Gilly were saying, these are two teams that were expected to be in the mix come tourney time. They have lived up to those expectations. Now, let's meet the starting lineups. We go to the public address announcer, Bob Reed. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome again to the St. Paul Civic Center for tonight's Class AA championship game of the 1994 Minnesota State High School League Boys Basketball Tournament. On the scoreboard for this championship game, the visiting team wearing the light-colored jerseys, a record of 26-1, the Section 5 AA champions, the Minneapolis Washburn Millers. team representing six section double a a record of 25 and two wearing the dark colored home jerseys the hopkins royals <laughs> introducing first the visiting cheerleaders representing washburn high school please say hello to jessica dorn Shanika jones 
Tamara Stallings, Crystal Thomas, and Shannon Weed, the Washburn cheerleaders. And now please greet the Hopkins cheerleaders, starting with Janae Bonine, Rachel Hippie, Jenny Peck, Jessica Douglas, Chrissy Swanson, and Kelly Wold, the Hopkins cheerleaders. Now let's meet the reserves first for the visiting team from Washburn. Starting with number 11, a 5'10 junior guard, Daniel Yarbrough. Five nine sophomore guard, number 15, Chris Snoddy. Five seven sophomore guard, number 21, Javon Jenkins. Six four sophomore forward, number 33, Jason Collins. Six three junior forward, number 35, Marcus Westbury. 6'2", senior center, number 45, Tony Kaut. 6'3", junior forward, number 51, Tom Ramert. And a 6'1", junior center, number 53, Fahim Jamid. Now introducing the reserves for Hopkins. Starting with number four, a 5'7 junior guard, Chris Harvey. A six foot junior guard, number five, John Arnold. 5'11 senior guard, number 12, Hans Erlinson. 5'11 senior guard, number 14, Todd Grodnick. A 6'1 ninth grader, number 22, Christopher DeWayne. 6'1 junior guard, number 24, Michael Bocamp. A 5'11 junior guard, number 34, Sean Erickson. 6'2 senior forward, number 40, Jeff Larson. A 6'1", senior guard and forward, number 42, John Swan. And a 6'3", junior forward, number 52, Brian Bender. And now let's meet the starting lineup, alternating by team, starting with a guard for Minneapolis Washburn, a 5'10", senior, number 13, Byron Suttles. For Hopkins, a 5'8 junior, number three, Lyman Myers. At the other guard, for Washburn, six foot senior, number 31, Aaron Boone. And for Hopkins, 6'4 junior, number 10, Matt Arnold. At center for Washburn, 6'11", senior, center number 41, Eric Minia. And for Hopkins, a 6'8", senior, number 54, Justin White. At forward for Washburn, 6'2", senior, number 25, Akeem Carpenter. for Hopkins, 6'4", junior, number 44, James Ware. At the other forward for Washburn, 6'4", junior, number 55, Adrian Patterson. And for Hopkins, a 6'3", senior, number 50, Sean Greener. assistant coach is Jim Bowen. The head coach is Lewis Boone. The Hopkins assistant coach, Brian Cosgriff. The head coach, Kenny Novak, Jr. 
The officials for this game are Dave Halleck and Carl Britt. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing a member of each team representing Washburn, number 15, Chris Snotty, and representing Hopkins, number 42, John Swan. Good evening, my name is Chris Snotty. Welcome to the Minnesota State High School League State Basketball Tournament. We appreciate your attendance at this tournament and hope you enjoy it. The State Basketball Tournament is being played under the rules of the Minnesota State High School League. These rules provide for fair play and good sportsmanship among players and coaches. As athletes, we ask that spectators promote the ideals of good sportsmanship, fair play, and respect for our opponents and the cause of the officials. Thank you, Chris and John. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Vocal Jazz Ensemble from Hastings High School under the direction of Lynn Luderman. These young folks are Amber Thyron, Matt Essler, Eric Rowan, Allison Storkamp, Catherine Tanner, Jennifer Everson, and Chris Doffing. They will present the national anthem a cappella, the Hastings Jazz Ensemble. job before the Class A championship game and we had a great game. We'll hope for the same uh, entertaining game here in the Double A championship and another look at the starting lineup. Well, I hope you've been with us all week. Some of those names, in fact, all of them should be familiar to you by now. We're ready to get it going. It's good matchups on both sides as we've talked about. We had a little, ex you're just joining us, a little more extensive pregame than normal because of the uh, closeness of the Mountain View game with Moorhead in the uh, third place. And there's Justin White and Eric Minia, the men in the middle. who will get this thing started. Justin White, number 54, Eric Minia, wears 41 in white. That will be an interesting matchup in the half-court game. But if you've watched Washburn play in the, uh, well, at all during the regular season or in the tournament, you know that that's been one of the problems of their opponents getting set up in the half-court game. 
So then the pressure shifts to the guards. Minia and White in the center circle. And the last game of the year is underway. Matt finally controlled by Adrian Patterson. And now the Millers will set up with Aaron Boone driving. Leading to Suttles, short. Suttles again. Get. <laughs> 33 <laughs> points in the tournament in the first two games. Byron Suttles is a quiet player, but he gets a lot of things done, and he's been scoring consistently for Washburn. Where a good game last night, 19 points. Scored just three in the quarterfinal win. Coming home in the back door cut. Byron Myers misses the three, rebounded by Boone. And the rebound goes out of bounds. The Hopkins Royals will get it. So many players that can step forward on each team. You're just kind of we're on edge here wondering which one's going to, you know, take the early lead in the game. And Carpenter started so well last night that everybody kind of whoosh, took a deep breath when he went up for that first three. And they look for the backdoor cut. Patterson with a steal. He picked off a number of steals in last night's game. Boom, drives and scores. First four points go to the Millers. Myers lobs it inside. White triple team feeds out some. Rebounded by Adrian Patterson. Team Carpenter looks for Patterson. First point, two minutes into the game. White drives around Minia. Feeds underneath. And the first foul of the game will send Sean Grainer to the line. Hopkins looks like they're being just a little too careful to me right now. If he'd gone up strong there, they had little choice probably but to foul him. He had real strong position in there, did uh, Graner. Big welcome to KAAL television in Austin, Minnesota. They've been with us throughout the tournament. They're here on championship night. Hoping along with us, the Minnesota Nine, we have a great double-A championship. Rainer misses the first shot. Rainer was a perfect five for five from the field last night, and five for seven from the free throw line. 15 points, really a great floor game. Foul, by the way, called on Minia, his first. And the Royals got to this game thanks in large part to their free throw shooting. 44 for 55 through the first two games. That's 80%. That's unbelievable as a team. Boone spins, but misses. It comes back to him. 12-footer. Good. Aaron Boone struggled from the field in last night's game. Just three of 12 from the field. But he hits two of his first three here tonight. 6-1 start to the Millers. White. Hit. Justin White with 32 points in the quarterfinal game. Just nine last night. He gets the first field goal for the Royals. Suttles quickly answers for the Millers. Washburn chances are coming from much too tight for Hopkins. So they've got to force them out a little bit further. 